guests, Merry Christmas. I know you are having a great day, but it's that time of year again when I raise a glass and I say thank you. Thank you to all you viewers. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for all the encouragement. I really, really do appreciate it. You are the guys and girls that keep this channel going. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Now let's get into some mini restoration. Right, bit of a recap from the last video. So we've got a brand new floor pan in. We've done our toe board repairs. That's all nice and lovely. We have repaired this inner sill. We've put a new jacking plate on there. Uh, we had to do a couple of little patches at the back here. Um, but in general, inside of the sill is pretty good. The rear slinger bracket's still intact. Um, and it's all prepped, ready to weld the new sill on. So there's a new sill. And as you can see, we've painted the cavities on the inside with Hammerite Smooth paint, which gives a good level of protection. All we've got to do now, it won't take long, we've got to spot weld this seal on, and then we've got to get the door step in. I'm not going to put the front slinger bracket back in. I did consider it, but when I looked, they were 20 odd quid, and it is kind of completely non-functional. It doesn't really do anything. I'm going to leave the old one in just because it's there and it's in good condition. So I've got my trusty spot welder. I bought this second hand off Facebook Marketplace a couple of years ago now. I can't, I think I only paid a hundred quid for it, which is pretty impressive. It is quite big, bulky and heavy, but all spot welders are. I can't remember what rating this one is. Let's have a look actually. I'm sure people are. So it's a Clark CW11. It's obviously, um, Quite a few years old it come with the long welding tongs which is good and it comes with the short ones as well now these welding tongs alone can be hundreds of pounds um, the only thing i find with it it can be a little bit slow so it says maximum uh, spots of three per minute now um i sometimes i do i do go over that so yeah minimum off time 20 seconds 20 40 60 yeah so three spots a minute you're only meant to do with that yeah, let's uh, let's get this seal on. Well, happy Christmas, everyone! I hope you're all having a great day. I'm actually recording this narration really late, so it's Christmas Day morning for me. I've not even opened my presents yet. But I thought I'd add a bit of narration because it's quite a long video. There's quite a bit of time lapse and genuinely, if you don't like the time lapse, the time lapse, it is all time stamped in the description if you want to skip past it. And if the music is annoying or too loud, just remember there is a volume control. You can turn it down. So this final bit of getting the actual sill on shouldn't take too long to be honest. Most of the work has been in the preparation and doing the repairs up until now. Now you will notice in an earlier video I put that aluminium tape along the bottom of the rear quarter. That just protects the paintwork there while you're going around with strip discs or wire wheels it stops the paint being damaged I think it also helps protect from the heat as well So I'm quite pleased with how these seals have gone. It's been relatively straightforward up until now. That brace bar is 
necessary. I did really need that because of the amount of metal I cut out the front, but it does get in the way and it's a bit of a pain when you're trying to obviously put everything back together again. But I need to leave the brace bar on really till the last moment until most of the seal is welded in just to make sure that the strength is still there. I did get asked in the comments in the last video about the spot weld drill I use. So it's a Sealy 8mm Cobalt spot weld drill. I will stick a link in the description and I'll message that viewer back with the exact part number. I think it's AK something. I'm just fully welding around the hole where the jack goes there just to make sure it's properly secure. And just a little tip here, you'll see me propping up the bottom of the seal. That's to hold it close up to the inner seal so there's no gap. So when you're plug welding like this, if you get any gap between the two panels, it, it really makes it difficult to weld. So a bit of a tip there, always make sure you've got good contact between the two panels and yeah, very little or, or no gap at all is best. Right, so uh, that is the seal welded on. Obviously, the door step's got to go in yet. Yeah. Uh, it went pretty nicely. As you can see, when I spot weld um, seals, I put lots. I put two rows, about six, five or six spot welds between each flute. Obviously, where you plug weld, the holes are bigger, so not able to do that. Um, but yeah, it's two, four, six, eight, nine two four six eight nine so nine spot welds the reason i say that is because i've seen lots of people put seals on and they they put a few spots here and there and uh it's a structural part of the car so it does want to be strong um welded around the jacking point these are obviously plug welds i do need to go and linish back these plug welds now um again like on the lip here uh, i've gone every inch spot weld every inch um, and then again you can see inside the car where the spot welds are so all I need to do now is get that door step on now one bit to look out for and I remember this on Sprout actually and I didn't well what seems to happen is this sill at the front it seems to go too far in um, and I remember on Sprout I think I I'd welded it all on and then I had to drill the welds back out again and pull it out because it, it just went in a little bit too far I think looking at this and I've, I've eyed up the doorstep on there um, I think I might be alright but it's just something to be conscious of um, because obviously the inside of that doorstep's got to meet that lip. Um, we've got the doorstep over here. It's just got weld through primer on at the moment. I need to wait for that to dry, mask off the weld through primer, and then I can um, put hammer eye on it. Um, yeah. This is um, a Magnum panel. Probably not the best, but I've got this panel for free off uh, a viewer, one chish, so we'll make some use of that. Save a few bob. Right, so we've got our repair step section ready to go back in. Again, that's been nicely hammer righted on the inside now. I had to repair that end just because it had some slits in it. Um, so yeah, this should be relatively straightforward. However, I think I previously mentioned, I think maybe this seal was a little bit too far in that way. It's probably only gonna be two or three mil. So I think I will probably tack it in place first and just make sure it's all right or there and thereabouts before I weld the whole lot in. So 
there's only one way to find out it's just get stuck into it now just a bit of an explanation i i tend to get a, a bit of stick every now and again about the choice of music on the videos it is very very difficult to find music that is the correct length for the bit of time lapse you're doing or the the bit of video you're doing and to find music that is royalty free so i've used lots of music in the past which is meant to be copyright free but what you tend to find is a few weeks or months down the line people putting copyright claim claims it, it can be quite frustrating so it is quite limiting the choice of music you can use so i do apologize sometimes if the music gets used over and over again now you so you see a, a obvious problem here which is definitely more prominent on the videos i hadn't really noticed it while i was welding that doorstep on but there's a massive gap between the sill and the doorstep at the front there which i will explain why um, once the time lapse stops but um, it's certainly now watching the video back more prominent than i thought it was So as you can see, me, me fettling around there trying to get a better fit. Right, hopefully I caught that on camera. So when you're spot welding, it is always worth to begin with when you're starting new spot welds, just to go along it afterwards and just make sure it definitely has taken because what can happen is you're just passing current between the two electrodes. So where the whole body's connected, where you're sort of spot welding this top bit with this bottom bit, obviously um, the easiest uh, path of least resistance for the current is just to go through the closest two bits of metal. However, um, when you're using weld through primers, weld through primers actually exacerbates the problem a little bit. You can get a high resistance here, and then the uh, least path of resistance is around the rest of the body. So what you end up doing is just heating up the tongs, heating up each side a bit of metal, but you're not fusing them together. And it can look like a perfect spot weld, but what will happen is you'll go along, and like I did, I hope you saw, I went along, I tried it, and they just pinged apart. So um, it does tend to be a bit of an issue when using weld through primers. Like I say, it does increase the resistance a little bit. But generally what I've found it is when the spot weld tongs, the prongs get a little bit worn out. So you want probably a two to three mil um, uh, point on the, on the spot weld uh, on the uh, tips. So there we go, I've just put them in the grinder, made new points again. I'll just run over these last few spot welds just to make sure they're fine before carrying on to the rest. Okay, so that's all nicely welded on now. I'm getting more used to the spot welder, actually. I, I can definitely see now where, I mean, it would be hard to pick up on the camera, but I'm getting more used to spot welding and what to look for. So um, what I can see, actually, is where I've narrowed the tip and cleaned it up. When, when it's welding, it's really distorting the metal. You can see, uh, well, as you see, sometimes you get a little bit of a flame come out between the panels where obviously it's melting the weld through primer. Um, and yeah, you can just see, you can see, I don't know how how good it will show on the camera, but you can see the metal's melted. So it's fused together. Whereas if I show you some of the other ones, can you see that just looks really neat and tidy, which is good. 
but uh, it didn't actually weld. So those three in the middle, I've got to go over again. And you can see these other ones, you can actually see, I mean, they feel sharp. Um, and uh, I obviously put the chisel in between to just to double check it. So I'll just do those three again in the middle. Um, and then I'm going to put the long tongs on. I need to just get this a few tacks in place. And I think I'm going to take the strengthening bar out, finish that off. And then actually before I go any further, I think I'm going to put the door back on and just make sure this is all in the right place. I did have a bit of faff with the end piece here, but that seems to have gone all right. Uh, you might have noticed there, I started spot welding, but I had forgotten to clean off the back of the panel so it still had paint on it. So I used a strip disc there to clean it off. Obviously the, the paint insulates the panel so the spot welder doesn't work. And just as a quick reminder, if, if you do want to skip through the time lapse sections, um, if you look in the timeline of the video, providing I've got round to doing it and remembered to do it, they should all be time stamped. So if you look in the description, you, you can skip the time lapse bits if you want to. Now, just a word of caution here. Um, those tongs on the spot welder do get really, really hot and you kind of forget about it. And because the spot welder is quite heavy, you end up grabbing one of the tongs and burning your hands. So just be careful. Now I'll talk a little bit more about the door gap in a minute, but I think I've got there in the end. I think it's, um, maybe going to take a bit of final adjustment later on. It is always worth, if you've done any work on that sort of A post, the seals, the floors, hinge panel at the front there, if you've got the door to hand, just pop it back on and make sure everything still lines up because the last thing you want to do is get the car all prepped or even all painted and then find out you've got issues. So, yeah, again, little tip there. If you're doing any work at the front there around that hinge panel or anything like that or the, you know, doorstep or enclosure or anything like that it's always worth just refitting the doors and just making sure that everything lines up and they fit you'll see that quite a bit with mark as well he'll refit the doors back on just to check i'm using a little die grinder there with uh carbide burrs on or it's a little Dremel, but carbide burrs are very, very useful for getting into the corners and the fine areas to grind away the metal. And that, folks, is the seal all done. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. Um, I did have to fettle around this front end because obviously you'd have seen I refitted the door and there was a huge gap down here. And I've got to be honest, I think it's this panel. Um, I, I have used Magnum panels before for the middle section and actually found them okay. Um, and if you look at the profile, it's actually it's pretty good at matching the old one. But as it goes towards the front here, so this this here is uh, it's over ninety degrees. The original panel is it looks like ninety degrees. That's probably a hundred degrees. 105 and then it gets larger and larger and larger as we go down here to the point it's probably 120 130 degrees down here now that might have been because i was bashing it about and manipulating it a bit um but what it resulted in was a big gap between the bottom of the door and the seal line um so to be honest i was thinking even if 
because I thought this seal was in too far. But even if it was further out, it's not going to be any further up. So, yeah, um, what I did in the end to kind of fix it for now, I've elongated the holes for the doors so I can move the door up and down. Now, obviously, if I move it down there, it means there's going to be a bigger gap at the top. Um, but I've still got to reskin that door yet. I've got to do more stuff to it. It just gives me a little bit more adjustment when it comes back together. It's probably not going to be 100% perfect, um, but it was, to be honest, it was comparable with the other side, the gap, once I'd adjusted on those hinges. So, um, yeah, really pleased. Obviously, we've got the new front floor pan there. This is all nicely welded in now. Uh, yeah, pretty pleased. It's quite a big job done that. I'm not gonna start on the other side yet. I think the next thing I'm probably gonna do is tackle this flitch panel here, repair here, prep the front end ready for a new front end and then we'll turn it round and do it do the other side um obviously painting inside the cavities took a little bit longer to do it. it's a bit more of a faff doing it but this is a car i plan on keeping to be honest so um and what's probably different from this to the other restorations is i'm really not in a hurry to get it done i would like to get it mobile by spring i.e the wheels back on it so i can maneuver it around because i want to get the other cars out but i don't want to rush this so yeah big milestone completed that really really pleased it's gone pretty well um yeah hope you enjoyed the video today if you did give it a thumbs up um subscribe if you're not a subscriber leave me a comment the encouragement through comments really does help, to be honest, and get me out here. And if you've got any questions, just ask. But I hope you enjoy your day. I'll catch up with you again next time. Cheers.